wanted to become a vampire hunter. Wait, why is he holding two crossbows and staring at me? Oh no, oh no! Hey, this is Chris. Hey, and welcome to part two of my vampirism mod review. So last time we covered how to become a vampire, and today we're gonna cover how to become a vampire hunter, which has cool weapons and stuff, cool powers, and it's still pretty cool. Wait, I said cool too many times, and also, I thought that was a trident at first until I noticed that um, it was actually Pitchfork. So yeah, um, I, Jonathan already showed part of the mod uh, before I even started, alright. So you want to become a vampire hunter, so there's a few things you need to know. So first, you need to find this house in a village so yeah these will usually be found in any type of village and they're pretty rare since um last time we searched there was like three villages and only one of them had it and yeah you need to search for this place because it has something special you need so at the backyard it has some garlic so yes you need garlic to turn into injection and yeah um inject it into your blood which is Kind of, it, it sounds kind of horrible. And like, dangerous. Yeah, it does sound dangerous. Hey Google, what happens if you inject garlic into your blood? Okay, Google doesn't even know how to respond to that. So now that you have your garlic, you need to make the garlic injection. So the garlic injection is made by having a syringe next to a piece of garlic. So yes, you just smash it into the syringe. So to make the syringe, you just need one glass pane of any type and two glass, normal glass of any type. Then you want to actually find this place for that too. So yeah, there's a chair in there that allows you to become a vampire hunter. But if you don't want to actually um, find this village, you can just craft it. By using seven iron, one wool of any type, and one glass bottle, and you have yourself a injection chair. I don't know why it requires a glass bottle, but yes, it does require a glass bottle. But let's pretend you actually found this in the village. So you would enter the house, you would just go near the bench itself and then you just right click and here you go. So you have become a vampire hunter by injecting yourself with garlic. Also, yeah, uh, apparently my mouth is going to smell like garlic now. And now let's go train ourselves. So yes, you don't need this guy yet because yeah, he won't teach you unless you're more powerful. Yes, he kind of hates newbies. Now you want to actually find normal vampire hunters. So this is usually found in the overworld. So yeah, there'll be some tents and yeah, there'll be a campfire in the middle and there'll be some vampire hunters spawning. So if you want to get trained by one, you just have to talk to them. And yeah, they do require vampire blood. So you have to actually hunt down vampires, but don't do it just yet. Um, Jonathan's about to give me the steak, but yes, you do require a steak to actually kill off a vampire. So yeah, this is what allows you to get the vampire blood and it's crafted by with two sticks and one plink of any type and you have yourself a stake. So now you actually need to find a vampire. So the vampires usually spawn in the wild or they actually spawn in the biome that you usually find them in. So yeah, I covered that last time. So yeah, make sure you check out part one of the mod review because yeah, that's where I actually explain how the vampires actually work. And you first have to get him to a lower level. So there we go. We got him to a lower level. And now we can repeatedly stab him with the stake. So yes, let's repeatedly stab him. Okay, so that was a failed attempt. But now I actually got some vampire blood. So now that you have a vampire uh, blood vial, you can just give it to this guy and he'll level you up. So now you'll level up. And just in case you don't want to watch part one, you can just click P and here you can unlock your skills. So there we go. So we have unlocked the skill by left clicking so there we go so we officially have leveled up and then by leveling up you have a few perks like using these um things over here so yeah i'm gonna go over them once i start leveling up so yeah you want to level yourself up up to level five with these guys what Jonathan, what have you done to that vampire i know they're powerful but that sword is way more powerful than a vampire so yeah i got a ton of blood and i'm gonna level myself up so yeah, they'll start asking for more and more and more. Yes, I don't know why they're obsessed with blood, but there we go. So now he's saying that he's not experienced enough and that he's a complete noob at being a vampire hunter. So yes, wow. dude, you are useless once I'm a higher level. So yeah, I'm about to become better than you. Now that you're level five, you can actually talk to this guy and he'll level you up as long as you give him a vampire intel book. So to actually get a vampire intel book, you need to actually craft the hunter research table, which is crafted with five woods of any type, one garlic, one book, and one vampire vein. So yeah, uh, why do I have so much trouble saying vampire vein? So yeah, 
and you also need a few more things to actually use this. So first off, you need um, normal books. So the normal books go in here. And then you want some vampire fangs, which you find by hunting down vampires, obviously. One vampire book, which is found in dungeons. And here you go. You have your hunter's intel book. And they, yeah, I'll eventually ask for a few more things. But don't worry, because yeah, you'll eventually see that once you start leveling up. So now that you have your hunter's intel book, He's going to ask for a ton of gold and iron. So in this case, he wants five iron and he wants one gold. And yeah, um, let me give him the intel book. So yeah, he doesn't require gold yet. And there we go. So he has leveled me up. And now you can repeat this process over and over. And yeah, like I told you guys, he requires something else. So now he requires pure blood and you can craft the next level, which makes it harder to actually craft. It. And yeah, the, the, the more you level up, the more things you'll ask for. So now... He might want some gold, yes. He might want gold eventually. God, dude, you're embarrassing me. I, I thought that was high enough of a level. Well, I embarrassed myself because I just noticed that it wasn't high enough of a level. Also, Jonathan pointed something out. So yeah, you do see uh, what level you are on by actually looking above your experience level. So I'm at the experience level 50, but on top of that, you can see that I'm at level 13 of a vampire hunter. And yeah, um, I also forgot about this chest. So yeah, this is how the loot looks. So yeah, it has a few things in here. So yeah, it has holy water. It has plus salts, which we'll need later. It has a chest play of swiftness. And yeah, there's a bunch of cool things in here. And also, yeah, now at this level, at level 14, no, actually to level you up to level 14, he requires a fortune. So here we go. So let's give him a level 14. Wait, he's he's considering it a ritual? <laughs> Wait, okay, oh, no. I, I this isn't a ritual, it's just me giving you a book. So, here we go, level 14, and he has taken all my gold. So, yeah, um, now he doesn't want to teach me because I don't train hen uh, hunters at inexperienced as you. Wait, wait, what? I'm more experienced than you, dude. What are you talking about? So, now I've upgraded myself so I can have absolutely every single thing that you can use here. So, yeah, this is what you want to actually do if you want to actually be able to access absolutely everything so yeah even if you don't have some cool powers oh yeah i forgot to tell you guys they do have some powers i kind of forgot that they had some powers already all right so let's just get straight into it so here we have the hunter weapon table so this allows you to make some special tools that you can actually make in a crafting table so yeah most of the time just enough items will sometimes show you the recipe and sometimes it won't so yeah if you have just enough items just go to the next slot and there we go so this is how you craft things on the hunter's weapon table so right now i'm gonna craft the enhanced semi-automatic crossbow okay that's a pretty long name but here we go so let's just grab our diamonds our string our iron and here we go so yeah it's not that big of a fortune like the guy was asking before but here we go. So as I remember, it's like this. And then you just do it like this right here. And here we go. Yeah, it's a bigger crafting table. So yeah, you should have just enough items or else you can just use the actual book itself. And it requires lava, which I didn't remember about. So yeah, this is even helpful for me doing the mod review. So yeah, you always want to craft this book, which allows you to see absolutely every single recipe in the game. So yeah, if you didn't see part one of this mod review, you need one vampire vein and one book. And to actually use this thing, you need to click it with lava. And there we go. Yeah, just right click it. And why did I say yeah like that? All right. So let me just try again and it should work now. So there we go. Once you put the lava in there, you have your first weapon. And this is one of the most powerful weapons in the game. So yeah, you might want to actually use the diamonds. And also, yeah, never do that. So I kind of put it under, uh, put lava over it. Oh yeah, I kind of remembered that. And also, yeah, there's kind of a misfortune here in the mod review. Because yeah, um, now I can't actually see if it's good or bad. But here we have the blood potion table. There we go. So here we go. Yeah, good pronunciations. Also, yeah, before I forget to craft the blood potion table, you need two planks of any type, three glass bottles, and three iron ingots. And you got yourself a blood potion table. And yeah, I forgot to tell you guys. So this is used to make potions out of vampire blood. So yeah. That sounds kind of disgusting and evil, but yes, you can actually craft potions that you drink. So yeah, you kind of become a vampire hunter who drinks vampire blood for some reason. And yeah, you can, you just put garlic up here in this slot right here, because it obviously has the sign for garlic. And I didn't mean it, I didn't mean to sound mean. 
and then you can put a modifier. So in this case, I'm going to put holy water in here and I'm going to start crafting. So what I believe happens is the holy water actually gets rid of um, very negative effects and leaves some negative effects or probably even positive effects. But here we go. So we have made these potions and now let's go into survival to show you guys if it actually backfires on you. Okay, so let's drink one of these potions. And yeah, it does have one of the bad <laughs> effects. You gotta be kidding me. All right, uh, 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 you you shall look away from the screen. Okay, I'm gonna look away from the screen. Oh. I'm sorry, I'm not I'm not looking at the screen. Uh, yeah. So yeah, now I have night vision and resistance, but apparently my stomach is now dead. If you get dizzy, yeah, you can do this. And there we go. So the effects are gone. Then we have resistance and night vision, which is pretty awesome. So yeah, make sure that you have some food on you or else you might die eventually. So now here's the alchemical cauldron. So here we go. So requires five iron ingots, one garlic, and two stone bricks. And you got yourself the alchemical cauldron. So yeah, next we are going to show you guys how to craft a specific type of vampire weapon, which is holy water. But you first need this pure salt. So to actually craft a pure salt, you just put garlic in this slot, water in this slot, and your fire in this slot. Okay, in this case, lava. Or yeah, blaze rods or whatever you want to craft. And here you go. So it's going to take a while, actually a very, very long while. And eventually it'll give you pure salt. And here we go. So it's ready. And now we have our pure salt. And now, oh wait. Oh, this animation is awesome. I didn't notice this. All right. So apparently Jonathan is using that. And wait, who is it? Okay. The quadrant belongs to me. So yeah, if you're multiplayer, it does lock the thing itself. Okay. So if I take off everything, um, it will allow you. Okay, so yeah, you have to craft your own. And now I'm going to show you guys the holy water. So yes, I was going to show you guys all these awesome weapons. But yeah, I'm going to show you guys this one says, yeah, we've already gone over how to make the pure salt. And now you want to make blessed salt so to make the holy water. So you just right click on this. So this is the altar of cleansing. So yeah, I showed it to you last time. But here, but as you can see, it requires four planks of any types two vampire fangs and one book and you got yourself an altar of cleansing so yeah this is used when your vampire want to go back to normal but in this case we want to make blood salt so you just right click on this and it turns all your salt into blood salt so here we go and now we can actually use it to make holy water so i'm just gonna grab all the gunpowder here okay so yeah i, ju I just remembered that's just to make splash potions but in a normal brewing stand you just put the blood salt and it should give you holy water. Well, more like a pseudo holy water. So it just gives you blessed salt water. And here we go. So if you use the altar and you have the ability to craft enhanced holy water, you'll always get enhanced holy water once you right click on this. So here we go. So we have holy water and there we go. So yeah, we have enhanced holy water. So here we have a normal vampire to throw holy water on. So wait, wait, who just shot him? Uh, what the heck just happened? No, oh, no, 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 no. Please don't be... Oh, you gotta be kidding me. They're fighting each other. Okay, so this is a normal vampire. And if you toss holy water at him, it won't do that much damage unless you toss like three... Yeah, like three of them. And now, here's the advanced vampire if Jotun spawns him in. Wait, I can't see anything. So this is the advanced vampire hunter. So yeah, with two shots, he's almost dead. But yeah, he's more resistant to this um holy water. So yeah, I take back what I just said. And this is the ultimate version. So let me just toss it at him. And yeah, you have to toss a few of them to kill him. So yeah. Yeah, so the advanced ones are usually more resistant to this. So yeah. Um, it was still the opposite before, but all right. What did you just do to me? All right, I'll come back to table. So now on to the crossbows. So yeah, these are the coolest weapons in this mod, um, apart from those two. But here we go. So we are going to grab... The enhanced double crossbow. And yeah, I'm not going to show you absolutely every single crafting recipe because yeah, they'll take forever. So you craft it with eight iron ingots and four string in the hunter's tape, uh, hunter weapon table. But yeah, I already showed you guys how to use it. So I don't know why I'm using it. But here we go. So we have a few types of shots. And here we have some of the ammo. So this is the vampire killer arrow, which actually kills any type of vampire that's a weakling. So you need three garlic to craft it, one golden ingot, one feather, and one stick. And you got yourself three vampire killer arrows. So yeah, these are pretty good to defend yourself against vampires. And here we go. So we have a normal vampire and we're going to shoot him once. And there, he's dead. Oh, what? He has four eyes. Okay, so here we go. One. 
And there we go. So even an advanced vampire actually dies. So yeah, the description right here is a complete lie. So to craft a crossbow arrow, you need one iron ingot and one stick. And you got yourself a, a mass destruction weapon. Okay, why did I have to say that? So here we go. So there's a, so here's a vampire. And yeah, these don't do that much damage. Okay, yeah, they do, do quite a bit of damage. But yeah, it can kill everything in two shots. Actually, no, I mean kill vampires in two shots. And it can also kill the advanced one in one hit. All right, um, apparently the damage is pretty random, isn't it? And now here we have the Spitfire arrows. So to craft them, you need one alchemical fire, which does not burn, uh, which does not spread. All right, I kind of forgot that part in the mod review, but I'm going to show it um, towards the end. So yeah. This does, uh, this does not spread and it causes a permanent fire. And you need three crossbow arrows to make it. And you got yourself three spitfire arrows. So yeah, it does give it back to you. And here we go. And here it is uh, working at its max. So here we go. So yeah, you can make a fire. Currently it isn't working. And I've told the creator and yeah, he's going to fix it. But yeah, if you shoot the vampire, it'll, it'll set him on fire for a while. And yeah, he'll start suffering. And also I made the mistake of spawning in too many. Jonathan, you handled this one. And I'll handle the powerful bill. So yeah, it does set the powerful bill on fire too. And yeah, I, I'm gonna run away. And now on to the enhanced semi-auto crossbow. So here we go. So this is the most awesome weapon. But unfortunately, it can't use the vampire killer arrows or the spitfire arrows. But it does require the arrow clip. So this is used to refill it. And here it goes. So the recipe just requires a bunch of uh, crossbow arrows in the hunter weapon table. And one iron and one piece of wood of any type. All right, so I kind of had trouble speaking for some reason. And now Jotting is gonna spawn in a few vampires again. And yeah, if you want to actually refill this, you just right click and it should start charging in one of the bundles. So here we go. Okay, I kind of forgot, so arrow clip. And here we go, so I can rapid fire absolutely a ton of arrows. And there we go, so I killed her in a few hits, but yeah, it does require a lot of arrows. And yeah, the disadvantage of this weapon is it requires a lot of reload time. So there we go. So he's completely dead, and why am I so happy about it dying? Oh no, okay, no, I just didn't get rid of those bats. And here we have a few weapons. So this is the pitchfork, and yeah, it's pretty annoying. Wait, I didn't mean the pitchfork. The pitchfork <laughs> is good. The bats are annoying. So to actually craft this pitchfork, you require five sticks and two iron ingots in the hunter weapon table. So yeah, I don't know why I keep redoing it. So yeah, if you want to actually see the recipes for this, you just go to items in this book, and then you just go to the weapon you want to craft. So in this case, pitchfork, and there we go. So yeah, I'm not going to go over absolutely every single crafting recipe, because yeah, this mod review will take a long, long time. And yeah, the pitchforks are pretty powerful. And Jonathan, why do you spawn two of them? So yeah. The advanced vampire instantly died because yes, this is a vampire based weapon. And yeah, it does instantly kill players. So um I'm sorry, Jonathan. Jonathan is kind of dead, and here we have the hunter axe. Yeah, the auto variety. So in this case, I'm gonna show you guys the enhanced version, which deals 30% more damage against vampires and has knockback three. So yeah, it is pretty overpowered. I'm gonna show you guys the recipe. And yeah, I'm gonna actually use the ultimate one. So in the in the hunter weapon table, you need two iron ingots, two diamonds, four sticks, and three garlic, and you got yourself an axe. Wait, why, why, does the, uh, why does the axe require garlic? And if it required garlic, shouldn't it go out the front? All right, I'm not going to even question the crafting recipes. But let's grab this axe right here, and I'm going to use it against Jotun. So here we go. So here we go. And yeah, it is pretty powerful. So imagine using this against a vampire. Actually, I'm going to use it against a few vampires. So here we have the ultimate hunter attacks. So it deals 50% more damage against nor normal vampires. And it, it does knock back IV. So I think that's level 5 if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know my norm, no, Roman numerals. Oh, here we go. So we have a few vampires. And I'm just going to eat this guy away. Okay. Yeah, it took a while. But this advanced vampire will instantly die because this is an advanced vampire killer. All right. So that came out correctly, didn't it? So this is the armor set for swiftness. So yes, this does make you go a lot faster than normal. And yeah, to craft it, you need a bunch of leather, two garlic, and two potions of swiftness. So yeah, I'm kind of tired of reading this out. So yeah, that's why I said a bunch of leather. And here we go. So each put, uh, each piece you put on makes you a little bit faster. So let me put this one on. And here we go. As you can see, you start zooming in. And here we go. And yeah, it looks like you just took something. So yeah, 
Now I am pretty, pretty fast. Wait, why am I saying yeah so much? Why do I say pretty twice? And yeah, the swiftness armor actually makes you pretty fast. So yeah, you can actually escape vampires if they're chasing you down. And yeah, just be warned that your FOV all start go uh, going insane. So yeah, I'll start opening up. And why did I not notice that? Why did I let Horsa can build this place? All right, so those stairs are kind of broken. And now let's take off the armor and let's try the other ones. So this is the ultimate one. So they are not crafted. So yeah, I kind of forgot that. So yeah, if you click this like, I don't blame you because I kind of forgot to tell you guys. These are only found in treasure chests. There is absolutely no way you can craft these, but this is pretty OP. So here we go. So let's grab the ultimate ones. And as you can see, they make you a lot faster than the swift, normal swiftness. And yeah, I'm just running around like a mad lad. So here we go. So I'm just running around. And yeah, it does give you jump blue. So I can get over this fence right here and jump like a uh, jump like an evil bunny. Wait, not evil bunny. Jump like a jump like a kangaroo. You dare? Because yeah, you can do long jumps too. All right. So let's just get rid of this. I I'm having way too much fun. I haven't really used this off camera. So. Here we go. Let's put this back and, and we're going to go over the Hunter Coat set. So yeah, the Hunter Coat set just gives you a lot of toughness. And yeah, I was going to review the other armor, but yeah, um, I don't like that makes you slow. And yeah, plus there's a lot of things to cover. So here we go. And we have the Hunter Coat. So yeah, I'm sorry if I didn't show the normal recipe for this, but yeah, it's going to get pretty difficult if I have a lot of stuff. And yeah, it just makes me look like a dork. Yeah, it looks, it looks like I'm just at a convention trying to be a vampire hunter, but um, yeah, I'm just going to return everything and forget about what I just said. Any parents, please don't get angry at me. But here's the last armor I wanted to show you guys. So this is the obsidian helmet of heck, uh, the obsidian chest plate of heck, the obsidian leggings of heck, and the obsidian boots of heck. So here we go. So let's put this on. And yeah, it does give you a lot of slowness. But it is way overpowered. So yeah, it gives you a lot of toughness. And yeah, it just makes you a lot a very, very slow. So I don't know why you would wear this. And yeah, it just makes you look like um some sort of um, mech robot. Although, actually looks like an exoskeleton. Okay, there we go. And here we have the garlic diffuser. Wait, why did I just realize this? This is why the vampires were kind of dumb and weak. All right, I kind of forgot about that. But yeah, I have to be more careful about this. I kind of ruined the mod review probably, but... Not really. Um, so here we have the garlic diffusers. So these make vampires weaker and it makes them slower too. So here we have the gar normal garlic diffuser, which doesn't have that much of a long range, but it's crafted by using two planks of any type, three obsidian, three diamonds, and a garlic diffuser core. So yeah, to craft the garlic diffuser core, you need one garlic in the alchem alchemical quadrant and a piece of wool. So yeah, for some reason it needs wool. Wait, okay, so yeah. The wool is actually giving off the smell and it, it makes vampires hate it. So this only affects a one chunk by one chunk area. And here we have the garlic diffuser weak edition. So yeah, it might sound contradictory to use a weak diffuser, but yeah, it's kind of tricking you because it covers a five by five chunk area. So yeah, it does give you a lot of range and might protect your entire base. But yeah, to, effects are kind of limited and and to actually craft this, um, okay, it does not have, it does not appear to have a crafting recipe. So it appears to only be found in treasure chests since, yeah, it might be considered ultimate version. And here we have the improved garlic diffuser. So it covers a three by three chunk area, but it's much stronger than the weak version. And yeah, it's probably, okay, yeah, it's stronger than the, the first infuser I showed you guys. So it requires the exact same recipe, but you need an improved garlic diffuser core. So to actually make this, you need ultimate holy water and garlic diffuser. So yeah, this one doesn't actually use garlic for some reason, but yeah, um, who cares? And yeah, you can actually supercharge this by using purified garlic. So to craft purified garlic, you just need any type of holy water and one garlic. And here we go. So it has been super powered and um, I don't think vampires are liking it. Yeah, I don't think any of them are liking it. Oh, no wonder they were, they had these potion effects. All right, I kind of didn't notice that. And now this is the end of the adventure as a vampire hunter. And now if you want to retire as a vampire hunter, you need this chair again. So yeah, now you need to inject yourself with pure vampire blood. So this is the sanguine urine injection. All right, I kind of, I kind of did the wrong move by trying to spell it, but to actually craft it, you need eight vampire fangs and a syringe. And here we go. So we are going to inject ourselves 
and we are gonna retire so yes we want to die so here we go and i am vampire level zero so yeah i'm neither vampire hunter or a vampire i'm just a normal boy now so the last part of this mod are factions so yes you can actually be in a faction so in this case this is a vampire hunter faction so yeah the entire village is gonna be filled with vampire hunters and this guy so he is kind of like a pope and he accepts vampire souls um okay that does not sound like a pope yeah because you're literally wanting souls and yeah there's um some sort of green bar once you try to bite him so i think it is that he's holy and yes um he made the achievement yuck okay so apparently he has garlic in his blood and yeah you can't suck the blood out of him and now you may be wondering how do you take over this village so it can be taken over by vampires and fill this entire place with vampires so you first need to find this village totem so the village totem is made of two pieces so yeah you kind of started the attack and yeah you just right click to start the attack and you have to kill absolutely every single person that gets in your way so yeah to craft the top of this which is the village totem top you need four obsidian three glass of any type and one iron ingot for the middle and then you need the village totem bottom which is crafted with two obsidian three iron ingots and four planks of any type so yeah as you can see the village is being captured but if you don't actually defeat everyone it'll start resetting and and yeah i forgot to show you guys they actually attack you so yeah it does keep resetting until you kill absolutely every single person getting in your way so let's get rid of this guy and let's search for absolutely everyone else so i think the pope is one of them too but let's get rid of steve and let's get rid of every other steve in this village yo yeah there's a few steves here so i'm gonna get rid of all of them and we are gonna take over this village and yeah advanced vampire hunters to start spawning in once you um start taking almost taking over the entire village so yeah defenders are remaining so we have to get rid of absolutely every single defender here in the town so we can now officially take over it so here we go so there's a few more of them left around here I i'm not sure where they are so here's one of them so this guy is right here and yeah there's like two more of them so there's one over there and yet the last defender was here on top of the mountain actually it wasn't him so i'm gonna so here we go so it has been uh, been captured by vampires and now this is a vampire haven so yeah i won't take any damage anymore so yeah that is pretty cool i actually didn't know this until i actually took over this village so now it's dark eerie and it's taken over by vampires also apparently i just learned something new apparently this place gets corrupted once it's taken over by taken over by vampires whoa um i i kind of got stuck there but yeah this is getting corrupted by this cursed earth so yeah the entire village is cursed now and yeah vampires are gonna start coming in once they realize that this is a place they can actually live in and sir oh okay i thought he took some blood out of me or something you can also easily capture a village by grabbing a neutral one actually taking over a neutral one yeah that's what i meant you can also make your own totem in a village that doesn't have its own totem so yeah you can just place it down and you can take over it too so here we go so it is being taken over um apparently twice i don't know why that happened but all right and yeah this is a vampire expert so yeah they do spawn in once you take over a village and this is basically the anti-pope and also because he's asking for human blood um sir sir are you a cannibal or something what what are you gonna do with those hearts um probably do some sort of evil ritual oh um but this is everything you need to know about factions in this mod so that was it for part two of the vampirism mod so yeah hopefully you guys do enjoy this i'm sorry if i kind of made a few mistakes but yeah i'm really trying my best because yeah just recording one and a half hours straight yeah that was a big mistake on my part but yeah hopefully you guys learned how to become a good vampire hunter all right and yeah don't forget to um, send me any feedback if you have any because yeah i've seen a lot of dislikes in my past mod reviews and i think it's mostly because of my annoying voice um according to the comment section i asked for the mutant beast part one so yeah i think that was kind of screaming at a time um i didn't really mean to but anyway don't forget to burn that subscribe button and hit that notification bell if you happen to be new to this channel and happen to be enjoying my content let's try to get to 10 likes on this mod review and hopefully you guys have an awesome day or night and see you all later bye, bye.